think React Native should discourage using controlled inputs because they are currently deeply broken and I have no confidence they will ever get fixed. Proposal PR. Oh boy, you know it's going to be a big one when Darren Abramov brings back his Twitter account to talk crap on the framework that he is most associated with. But even kept up with what Dan's been doing lately, he works on Blue Sky, which is, funny enough, a competitor to Twitter. But as such, he's deep in mobile development. He has been living in React Native, and his whole perspective on React has been shifting over the last two years as he has gotten deeper and deeper in the weeds of building applications. And what's fun with this issue is it kind of confirms the thing everyone loves to complain about with React Native, which is that it lets you build really shitty apps. We have to talk about this. Both, what is wrong, how wrong is it, and how can we fix it? Before we could do that, let's quickly hear from our sponsor. Yo, all good, man. I thought you just got a ton of users at your startup. Yeah, but our analytics provider charged us over 20K and now we're kind of going out of business. Ah, the ramen and the lack of furniture make more sense now. Nah, I just like ramen. I, you know what? Fair. You should check out PostHog though. They're an all-in-one suite of product tools. They handle everything from your analytics to session replay to feature flags. Wow, that's cheap. What if they raise prices though? I don't want to lose my whole business again. Totally get the worry, but they have two things that are important to know. First, they're fully open source, so you could self-host if you want to. The second is that you can export your data anywhere you might want to put it instead. That sounds too good to be true. There's gotta be a catch. They're uh, a little obsessed with hedgehogs. Oh. Thank you, PostHog, for sponsoring today's video. In order to understand what's going on here, it's important to understand the difference between controlled and uncontrolled inputs. I just whipped up a quick demo to show the difference. Here we have a controlled input. We have the input type is text, value is the value, which is a variable here. And we have an on change where we update the value in React before we render the change. This is fine if your app is simple enough. So if we go to localhost and take a look at these inputs, I am typing and you can't see it because we're in dark mode, LOL. Okay, let's fix the font color quick, um, text black. Cool, now you can see it. And as I type, everything's fine. Where things can get bad is if we block or if this is slow or if anything causes this value to not get there faster. Let's give an example. Function block for, and this by default is gonna be a promise, but we don't want this to be a promise. We want this to use a while loop to block main thread. And now if we call this, for 100 milliseconds, and I type fast enough, we get those wonderful laggy keys. Isn't this great? The whole thing just froze. So I'm gonna type the quick brown dog. Wonderful, we love it. And if the way that your update layer is triggered is inconsistent enough, this will feel terrible. But it doesn't really matter if we put something like this in the uncontrolled input, I can type totally fine, even though this component is really slow. The reason is the actual contents of this input are not determined by React or my JavaScript code. They're determined by the browser in the input field itself. If I want to get the content of this, like let's say we want to use this for a submission of some form. We have like a button on click equals, let's alert the current text. With the example above, it's pretty easy because we have the value in JavaScript already. So when I click the button, quick brown dog works as expected. So this is slow. It's still slow, but when I alert, really easy to get the text. When you have an uncontrolled input, you have to get the text when you want it, instead of it just always being there because it is owned by React. The state here is owned by the browser, not by React. That's why it's uncontrolled, because React isn't controlling what the input has in it. The input's controlling itself, and we have to grab from it. So we would do that by calling input ref dot current dot value. And now this is fast AF and alert works, but we have to pull the data out from the form instead of the classic on change update the value. This is bad, but it can work if your app is fast enough. And most apps probably are. And I am sure everyone here that is writing React 
has written this code before. I've even written code like it in the last few weeks. Doesn't mean it's good. Historically, we've recommended using libraries that handle this for you, like React Hook Form. React Hook Form is an uncontrolled input manager that allows you to pull the updated state after all of the things have been done. So the state lives inside of the input still or inside of the form, and you can pull it out when you're ready. Or you can just have it update with a debounce. That's it's just this is the right way to do things. It's funny they're even giving the example here of a mobile site with a simulator, but you can also use it with React Native. And generally speaking, you should probably use something like React Hook Form if you have user-controlled inputs. I just got some bad news. It looks like even React Hook Form might have this problem. I haven't confirmed this yet. And once again, look for pinned comments to see if there's more information that has been discovered or not. But it looks like the way of using React Hook Form with React Native is to use it with a controller. And the controller has a render function that still passes the value to the text input. It is possible they are doing some magic to bind this on a layer where it is not overriding the actual text input that you're getting, but I find that really hard to believe. My gut feel looking at this is that the exact same issue will exist. I could very well be wrong, but it seems like this is just the case, and that is terrifying to me. Uh... <laughs> And here is where we get to Dan's issues. The pull request makes this quite clear. Discourage using controlled inputs in React Native because they are broken. You know it's a banger when Dan Abramov's pull request starts with the text, I don't know what else to do. Basic controlled text editing is broken in React Native. Here's his example. It's basically the exact same thing I just wrote. Value, set value is use state. Text input, placeholder edit me, on change, set value to the new text. Value is value. This seems like the most innocent code in the world. Minus using let instead of const. I don't know when that happened to him. Yeah. Anyways, simplest code in the world. This should be totally fine. But it's not. If you type at an even somewhat reasonably fast speed, do you see that? I have had that happen in so many apps where I'm typing and the cursor gets moved to before the text. Another one I have that's similar is my autocomplete will recommend like two words where I've typed the first word and I press it. If the app's implemented correctly, it'll override the first word and replace it with the two. But sometimes it'll just append the same word after it and then put the next word after. It's awful. And a lot of these happen from the logic code that was written, admittedly often React Native, but not just React Native. I've seen this in native apps too, where the control of that input is owned by something that isn't the operating system or the browser, and it does the wrong thing when using the keyboard in certain ways. This is really bad. The cursor should not lag behind typing because it causes incorrect user input. This is not a theoretical bug. We have it in production. It's embarrassing. Many kinds of bugs are tolerable, but this is a hello world example and it's broken. This is contributing to the perception that React Native is incapable of producing high quality native apps. I haven't figured out a way to convince the team to prioritize this, so maybe it should just be deprecated. Why put it in the docs? We need to rip out all controlled inputs from the app, and I think other teams using React Native or choosing to adopt it should be aware of this issue. We previously reported it back in April. It's not a fun thing to discover when you already have a lot of existing code. It's much better to know early. And this is far from the only bug related to controlled inputs. Here's another one I just ran into today. This is actually what pushed me over the line to file this issue. The typical workaround is to use default value and avoid controlled inputs completely. It should be a recommendation if this cannot get prioritized. I know there's been a focus on the team on getting things fixed with the new architecture, and that's understandable. However, it's still broken in the new architecture. Here's one using Fabric and it still happens. I wanna see this other bug that he mentioned. Multi-line controlled inputs enter an infinite loop on IO. God damn it. Uh, this code enters an infinite loop. App equals render outlet set outlet use state outlet child. The child is a text input and we're portaling it to the outlet multi-line on changes, yada yada. The outlet is a memoized outlet. The portal's a memoized portal. If they remove the multi-line prop, it's fine. But with this as it is, a multi-line input that's values controlled by React, infinite loops, and fails. Terrifying. They have an example here. 
Oh, look at that. You're typing and it just, oh God. What is this flutter? We're better than this. I know it takes a lot to develop the framework and this issue may simply not be enough of a priority, but I think it's important to communicate honestly when one of the most fundamental features is broken at the hello world level. Hence this PR. Thanks for consideration. I want to see the PR. Docs text input. The value field implementation is broken in many subtle ways and is not recommended for use. Until the bugs are fixed, we recommend sticking with default value and using uncontrolled inputs. C link is the comment here, which I think is a good idea. I think this is good. At the very least, this should be done ASAP. Ideally, the value prop would give a warning in your actual editor too for people who are doing this. That is, I, I knew it was bad. I did not know it was this absurdly bad. Jesus Christ. Th this straight up is the most skeptical and concerned I've ever been about React Native. I know people on the team are watching. The people on the team know how much I love and respect them and all of the hard work they've done. This is one of those rare opportunities that y'all have to jump on something hard, make it really high priority, and over time, this will help the whole ecosystem be more successful. And I totally agree with Dan that these types of things are massive contributions to this weird perception that React Native is bad or slow. The reality is that React Native uses native. And if you lean into the native platform with React Native, it is just a simpler way to build native interfaces. But the problem with the controlled inputs is that you're no longer using the native part. The input is native, the value is not. And if you have to leave the native layer to type, that is not a good thing. I don't care how optimized they get their JavaScript. Having to leave native to do the inputs is bad, and they should never, ever, ever recommend it. I want to check the React Native docs quick. Handling text input. No. The handling text input on the basics isn't... I, I am upset. I am in pain. I hate that I'm giving points to Flutter, but I am. Very begrudgingly, I am. I feel sick. Uh, 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 uh. Apparently, we have now heard from Joe Savona that this doesn't live up to their standards and they'll be looking into it ASAP. That is very good news. Also, this thread's full of gems. Tamo would get this prioritized. I absolutely agree. Tamo is the glue that held together the original React team. I don't know how to write this in a non-mean way, but inputs must not drop keystrokes or lose caret position. Not in the common case. It's easy to lose sight of something like this with multi-year projects, but this stuff doesn't matter if you can't trust the framework with the basics. Absolutely agree. And I would argue it's something that React historically has done really well, that the, the default way to use React is usually, for the most part, setting you up for success. The exception being use effect, but we've all been there. Getting these things right is a matter of pride for the React project I know and remember. This is not Flutter. <laughs> this is an expectation of baseline levels of platform fidelity. Even if this doesn't reproduce super often on device, it is a big no-no. I feel silly pointing to this with, this is important, right? Right? But like, I don't know. Someone has to do it. We used to care about the baseline. React Native at Meta is far from fighting for survival anymore. Surely the more ambitious stuff can be put aside for a few weeks. This would be a few days to fix, at the very least to just mark it as deprecated or the wrong way. If it's really completely unfixable in both paper and fabric, or if no one is willing to spend a couple of weeks deeply investigating the code, or if the team is just too scared to touch the existing text input code, surely control inputs can be explicitly warned against. Yeah, absolutely. That said, the default Expo React Native template was like forgetting to run the ESLint rules of hooks and stuff. It seems like the focus with React Native has been making these giant React Native projects more maintainable, where React's focus is still on everything, be it big companies or getting started. React Native's getting started story hasn't really been owned by the React team for a while. It's kind of been punted to Expo. We're underwater deep on everything from infra to native debugging stuff to deployment platforms to fighting Apple and Google's policies. They don't have time to make sure the right lint rules are being applied on an app by default when most of the apps they're using have been built for five plus years. Very important points. And that said, the focus needs to be there. Like someone's job on the React Native team should be making sure the onboarding path and getting started stays really, really good.
And that sounds insane to have a person whose job is just keeping the happy path happy for getting started. But I think React Native deserves that level of focus. I can empathize with a hundred different excuses and I feel for the team, but like, hey, inputs are broken. The most basic example, this should be a SEV with like a severity, like a severe issue that's being treated seriously. I, for, I come from Amazon, this would be called a SEV1 or a SEV0, and I should, it should be that. Losing user inputs, and yes, cursor glitches cause lost user inputs, is a bad bug, and we have it here at the framework level. React Native is supposed to faithfully wrap native components. It should not degrade their default behavior. If this is not a priority, then maybe these sentences need to be edited. I'm sure there are reasons why it isn't a priority, but it doesn't change the outcome. I think this should be a SEV, both because the actual behavior and the fact that it has not been prioritized are severe issues. Again, I'm sure that there are reasons why it hasn't been, but I think it is genuinely worth spending some time reflecting on original project ethos and whether it's still relevant. P.S. I like React Native a lot. It's been great to use, and the team is doing a lot of great work. If there's something to suggest here, from my perspective, is to establish some baseline where native control should not degrade platform UX in common cases, and treat that as a high severity issue. Absolutely agree. I've missed Spicy Dan. It's been a while since we got a Spicy Dan rant like this, and I'm more than happy to cover it for y'all. Let me know what you guys think. Hopefully they'll get this fixed. Keep an eye out on the pinned comment to see if they have. Until next time, peace nerds.